Hello, my name is Eduardo Castillo. I'm the only team member of the Smart System for Occupancy and Building Energy Control Project version 3.0. This is my introduction video with my mentors Ali Mostafavi and Leonardo Bovadillo. So beginning with the actual problem uh, for this project would be the fact that 48% uh, of most of the energy being used in the U.S. is from buildings. And the point of this project is to essentially micromanage energy usage inside buildings to reduce energy waste. These are all of the user stories that were implemented during this uh, 2015 fall semester. So talking about one of the big user stories that were worked on was the ability to add user reviews to the current room conditions. So essentially, it allowed the user to be able to rate how comfortable they were in their current zone and or room. They would uh, essentially have to be logged in, be in the main screen, and then the user can select the rate current room zone conditions button, which allowed them to bring up a dialog box that had a rating system from one to five. Essentially, if you rated one, that means you need less temperature, you need it to be colder, or you need less light. While if you rate up, you need more temperature, you need it to be warmer, or you needed more light. The next big user story I worked on was indoor localization, indoor location tracking. So this allowed me to use the indoor Atlas SDK, which I found online. Essentially what it does is it uses the magnetic field. It fingerprint, you fingerprint magnetic fields using your smartphone, which is uploaded to the indoor Atlas uh, servers. And then when you run their SDK, which essentially is a service running in the background, it reads the magnetic field reading off of your phone, and then essentially using that as a accelerometer, sends that information to their servers, which returns back the geo coordinates of your current indoor location. The preconditions in order to be able to use this feature is you must be logged in, you must be on the main screen, the user has to have toggled the indoor location tracking through the settings menu. And in order to see the results of this, the user has to swipe from the left to the right on the bottom half of the main screen to bring out the Google Maps overlay to show your current location inside the building. The use case begins whenever the user is logged into the system and swipes from left to right on the main screen. The system responds by polling the indoor location service and updating the Google Map view showing your location. The case ends when the user is able to see their location in the Google Map view. Another pretty important user story is the ability to add a room to the SQL database for geofence. So essentially, now that we have indoor localization, we needed a way to be able to tell if a room is occupied or not. The obvious solution here would be to use geofencing. Essentially, we take, make a polygon and then overlay it on top of the map. And if a user is inside the polygon, then that means that that room is occupied. If they're outside, then the room isn't occupied. So in order for you to add a room to the SQL database, you, are, you must be an admin or a facility manager. You have to be logged in, you have to be on the main screen, and you have to have already toggled the indoor localization tracking in the settings menu. And then to prompt the dialog, all you have to do is, some, is press or select the record current room button. So this is the, U, the UML use case model uh, for the general user, essentially what happens is um, with this next iteration of this project is we allow the user to have the ability to toggle whether or not they want to report their location to the SQL database. So now 
when they toggle it on, the SQL database has their geo coordinates of where they are inside of a building. We also added the ability to rate their comfort level inside of the room. This is the UML sequence diagram for adding user reviews. This is the UML sequence diagram for indoor localization. How it goes from the user selecting to start, pull, start reporting their location from the settings menu to actually seeing the results and actually updating the database. This is the UML sequence diagram for adding a room for geofencing from the admin's perspective. This is the system design diagram. Essentially, it's the same as it was the previous iteration, where we have a user with that interfaces with the UI elements, and then we have a UI controller with a sync adapter that synchronizes all the information in the background. But now in the controller, we have asynchronous tasks running in the background that run to pull the indoor Atlas service, which is the service that runs in the background that actually returns your indoor location with geo coordinates using magnetic fields, which in turn also pulls the indoor Atlas servers as shown in the figure below. System deployment. So essentially, the system is exactly the same as it was the previous uh, iteration, where we have a Linux virtual machine device running with a MySQL, Apache, and PHP running the server side of things. And we have the Azure device acting as the client with its own local SQL Lite database. But the Azure device also has a map loader's asynchronous task that pulls the indoor Atlas service in the background, which shown by the little HTTP uh, line at the bottom also contacts the indoor Atlas servers, which takes all of the information of the magnetic field readings and your accelerometer and essentially computes your location and then returns it. Persistent data design is the same as it was the last iteration. The only difference is that we now have the floor plan rooms, floor plans, and building tables, which are used to designate uh, the buildings table. You can store several buildings, and then from each building, each building has several floor plans, which designate each floor of that building. And then each floor plan has several floor plan rooms which is essentially a group of rooms that belong to that one floor plan. Security and privacy. As with all Android applications, they are mostly sandbox. Essentially what it means is the application has its own little folders storing its executable, documents, library, temporary files are all in its own folder and it does not interfere with any other applications that are on the phone. So they do not talk to each other. Extremely secure. My minimal design, my minimal class diagram is practically the same. The only difference is, of course, that we now have the new asynchronous task that uh, we're using to run in the background to actually pull for the location as shown on the left side. We have the map loader, which extends the asynchronous task and then the map loader actually depends on the indoor location service to be able to pull for the location. We also have the MyZones activity, which depends on the map loader to pull the indoor location service for the actual location. And we also have the update dialog location, which is also another asynchronous task, which essentially loads in your current location to record a room, for example. And then we have the room object, which is used to describe the rooms as geo coordinates and having shapes to uh, calculate for collisions. Like when somebody enters a room, is it occupied? Yes. If they exit, then it's not occupied. And we also have 
Zone Loader, which is a new asynchronous task I added at the beginning of this uh, project to offset some of the work that this uh, application was doing at the beginning where it was running network code in the foreground when it should have been running in the background. So now the application runs much smoother. State machine. Essentially, this is the description of an Android app's lifecycle. The activity goes from running to pause to stop and on destroy can get called whenever you, for example, close the application completely or wipe it from the RAM and then it gets destroyed. Um, it goes from running to pause whenever you say press the home button and you actually exit out of to back to your Android home screen. And then it goes on stop whenever you actually uh, stop running any processes inside of that activity after it goes on pause. Essentially, if it pauses after you go back to your home or go into another activity, if it doesn't have anything that's running, it stops. So it goes on stop. And then if you uh, activate your recent menu button and you activate your activity again, then it goes back to on resume and it goes back into the running state. So here I have the main algorithm used for detecting occupancy in rooms. This is a client side solution. Um, so I have this method that takes in the latitude and longitude of the current user. We check if the, uh, the list of rooms is not null and it's not empty. So that means that the list of rooms has been initialized and it's not empty. And then we go through, uh, we loop through every, every room in the list of rooms then we check to see if the room we obtain a rectangle object, a rect f object, and then we compare it with a point f, uh, a point float object, which is obtained by using the latitude and longitude of the user. And we essentially do kind of like video game like collisions, where we basically say, is this point inside of this rectangle? If it is, then set the room to occupy it. Otherwise, set it to not occupy. And we also have the check user against room method, which I essentially say, all right, we checked this room, we said that I'm not in here, but that doesn't mean that no one else is in there. So let's check against the other users that are currently online on the system. And if that's true, then set the room to occupy it. Otherwise, set it to false. And then at the end, we publish our progress by showing the room's uh, true color on the Google map. Here is a small little toggle indoor location testing script that I made using uh, Espresso. Uh, essentially, all it does is just open up the menu, it toggles it on, then it waits for 10 seconds to see if everything's initialized, and then it just toggles it back off to see every, if everything closes up correctly. 